When you hear about Minecraft speedrunning, the first thing that probably comes to mind is, well, the base game. Make some tools, go to the nether, get ender eyes, enter the end, and kill the dragon to reach the credits. These runs are pretty impressive, but I just find speedruns of custom maps to be way more interesting. These runs often involve tons of crazy routes and strategies that the average speedrunner wouldn't even dream of, and the run you're about to see is no exception. Hey everyone, it's your favorite funny minecrafter here, speedycube64, and in this video, I speedrun a custom Minecraft map called Goliath and beat the world record by over 7 minutes. This map is part of a genre called Complete the Monument, or CTM for short. If you don't know what that means, it's sort of a mix between adventure, combat, and survival all at once. The objective of these maps is to collect certain items scattered throughout various dungeons and then put these items on a monument. This specific map was made by RenderXR for Minecraft version 1.8. There are 16 differently colored wool blocks, 3 mineral blocks, and 54 bonus emeralds to collect, but since this speedrun is in the any% percent category, I won't be getting any of the bonus emeralds. If you already know everything about this run and want to watch this run without commentary, there will be a separate video linked in the description. Without further ado, let's get into the run. In many CTM maps, there is a dungeon at the very start that you need to go through before you get to areas of the map that actually contain wool. But as you can see, I'm not doing that. These maps can get pretty big sometimes, so map makers often put systems in place that let you backtrack more easily once you've already made it through an area. In this case, there's a secret tunnel that basically goes around the first dungeon, so you don't have to go through it multiple times. But I already know that this tunnel exists, so there's nothing stopping me from going through it the other way. I do have to slowly punch out a couple of stone blocks to access the tunnel, but even then, it's still a few seconds faster to go through it than to run through this area normally. Once I make my way out of the starting area, I am going to be entering the first intersection of the map. The structure of this map involves 7 different intersections, each linking to different areas, some of which contain wall blocks and some of which don't. At this intersection, I have a few choices to make, but I enter the Orange World Dungeon because it has the best gear. This dungeon is called Ember Mines, and the first thing I do here is grab a nearby pickaxe and mine through the floor to a lower area of the dungeon, where I'll be getting some basic supplies. If you couldn't tell already, throughout the run, I'm going to be taking advantage of my knowledge of the map and digging to areas I'm not supposed to know about on my first playthrough. Right now, I'm using my golden pickaxe to dig through a wall to enter the last room of the dungeon which I would normally have to run around in a big loop in order to access. I pick up a speed potion and a health potion, and I use them both before making my way to this dungeon's wall box. After I get the wall, I retrace my steps to run all the way back to intersection 1. This is basically the only time in the run that I actually have to go back through a dungeon after I've collected the wall. From now on, I'm going to be using a variety of techniques to skip any and all backtracking through areas. Once I'm back at intersection 1, I start heading towards the entrance of the white wall dungeon, but instead of actually going there, I start staircase bridging upwards to a nearby ledge above the intersection. I run past this absolutely clueless creeper and dig down next to it. I'm making my way towards a secret two-way teleporter which is supposed to serve a similar function to the shortcut tunnel at the very beginning. This takes me to an area called the Valley of Hope, which not only contains the monument, but also acts as a hub world of sorts and contains two-way teleporters to all five of the overworld intersections. I get some more basic supplies including some redstone items which will be incredibly useful later. This area is connected to intersection 3, so in order to access the teleporter to intersection 4, I have to break through this wall of wooden planks which keeps it hidden. Since these teleporters use simple command blocks that can be activated from any distance, there is a lot of room to abuse them, and the first instance of this is about to happen. Using the redstone components from earlier, I set up a contraption called an arrow despawn timer. When an arrow is shot onto the ground, it stays there for a minute before the game removes it. In this specific case, the despawning of the arrow will unpress the button which will then power the torch, activating the command block and teleporting me back to the hub. So this contraption basically delays my teleportation which allows me to go do stuff in this area and then remotely warp out without having to backtrack. Anyway, after getting even more supplies from a secret room, I run to the middle of this intersection and start pillaring up to the ceiling to grab a hidden diamond axe with a bunch of enchantments including looting 4. 
Part of this run's route involves making like Dream and killing Endermen with this enchanted axe to get a bunch of Ender Pearls, so this means I'm going to have to reset for good RNG. But today is my lucky day, because I see an Enderman right after entering this area. Since strength is broken in 1.8, I can kill him in 2 shots and he drops 5 pearls, which is the maximum amount, so I'm off to a great start. At this point, the arrow I shot earlier is about to despawn, and I'm not done with this area yet, so I lower my render distance to unload the arrow and effectively freeze the timer so that I can spend more time in this area. You'll notice I didn't turn my render distance down all the way, and that's because render distance values lower than 6 don't actually unload entities in this version for reasons too complicated to explain here. After getting the wool, I turn my render distance up to allow the arrow to despawn and teleport me back to the hub. Then I briefly stop by intersection 2 to set up another redstone contraption which is similar but not exact to the arrow despawn timer I set up earlier. I'll explain that later, but for now, I'm entering a hidden end portal which takes me to the end, er, I mean the forbidden realm. This realm contains what are supposed to be the last two intersections of the map. I start off by going to yet another two-way teleporter, which basically takes me right outside the entrance of the map's very last dungeon, but instead of going there, I just set up the same redstone contraption I made earlier in intersection 2, and this time, I actually have the chance to explain what this does. When I press the wooden button, it stays pressed for two seconds before it unpresses. During this time, I place the redstone torch, which stays on for a single tick before it turns off, which teleports me out. The game then unloads the redstone components because I'm far away. When I reload the chunk, the button will stay pressed for a second before it unpresses, turning the redstone torch back on and activating the command block. This trick is known as an instant signal deload, and the advantage it has over the arrow despawn timer from earlier is that you don't have to spend a minute with the chunks loaded. If you look in the bottom left corner of your screen, you can see a list of all the instant signal deloads as well as any other exploits I currently have set up. Another thing to explain about the map is that although I am technically in the end dimension, the actual biome alternates between desert and nether, which allows mobs to spawn here that normally can't. A side effect of this is that the spawn rates of endermen are actually worse than they are in the overworld, making the run more reset heavy. Fortunately for me, I happen to get extremely good spawn rates and pearl drop rates in this run, getting 12 pearls from 3 endermen. In this run, I need to get at least a couple of ender pearls early on because of this next trick I'm about to do, which is called a pearl hang. I throw two ender pearls in opposite directions. Because of my low render distance, the second pearl unloads, and after I do this next area, I can turn my render distance up to reload the pearl and instantly teleport out. With this pearl frozen in the air, I make my way towards a miniature volcano and drop down a giant shaft, catching myself on the ladder to save myself. The map has a mechanic which is supposed to troll you by taking the ladders out from underneath you, but I'm just too fast for it to notice me. This next dungeon doesn't really have much to it besides running from pillar to pillar and collecting a bunch of different items, so I'm going to explain something else. You've probably already noticed that there are two different timers in the top right corner of the screen. The timer on the top measures in-game time, which doesn't go up when your game is paused or in the main menu. The timer on the bottom measures real time, which always goes up no matter what. It's nice to know the time of your run using both of these timing methods, but the in-game time is the one that really matters. Now I'm just going to be collecting the rest of the useful supplies in this area, as well as the purple wool block. Once I have everything I need, I turn up my render distance to load the pearl back in. But then I immediately do another pearl hang because I'm heading towards another area which would otherwise require some backtracking. But before diving head first, or falling feet first into this area, I'm going to climb up to the top of this miniature volcano to grab a pair of diamond boots which have feather falling 10 on them. This area is called the Red Maze, and its main gimmick is that it's surrounded by lava, so one creeper explosion could flood the maze. But I'm going to be using this feature to my advantage instead. By jumping into the lava and throwing a pearl downwards, I can skip the entire maze and just go straight to the wool box. But before I go, I still have one more thing to get from this area, so I use one more pearl to reach a section of the maze that's right above me. This chest right here contains 16 obsidian, and you can probably guess what we're going to use this for. 
The next minute or so of the run is mostly just running from point A to point B, so there isn't too much to explain here. I'm not exactly sure what these big white things sticking out of the ground are supposed to be, but I pillar up to the top of the biggest one, because there's a chest up there containing some minerals as well as a whole stack of obsidian. If I keep taking this path, it will eventually take me to intersection 7, but because of the way the map is designed, this island is positioned directly over a different area. Digging down through this shallow pit of lava takes me to an intersection called the Super Secret Shortcut Intersection of Fun. On top of being a faster routing option in general, this place contains some good loot as well. This intersection leads to three different areas, but only one of them is a wool dungeon, and I'm going to be entering that dungeon from the back side which is actually how you're supposed to find this intersection in the first place. This intersection actually takes you to these different areas using automatic teleporters, which you can see by watching my coordinates change drastically. This area is called the Marsh of Misery, but this is actually going to be one of the least miserable areas of the map because I can just cheese the entire thing. I start by expertly parkouring to get past a river and approaching a giant tree in the distance. The wool box is located inside this giant tree, but instead of going through a maze to climb up, I'm going to get above the tree and then use two ender pearls to clip through the bedrock wall surrounding the wall box. The trick to doing this clip is to aim slightly left while throwing the pearls because of how they come out of the right side of the player's hitbox. Thanks to Optifine, I can now crank my render distance all the way up to 50 to reload those chunks where I previously set up that instant signal deload. As you can imagine, this is a bit resource intensive. I actually had to allocate extra RAM to the game to consistently avoid crashes, and even then, things can still get a bit laggy. Once the game gets itself together, I can proceed with the last two areas. A useful thing about the setup I used for the instant signal deload is that it can be reused as an arrow despawn timer. So I fire an arrow into it and start conquering Everscream Citadel by climbing up to the very top of this tall tower. Note that unlike the last arrow despawn timer I set up, I won't have to unload the arrow while I'm in this area because I don't plan to spend more than a minute here. I've gotten the wool, but I'm not done with the area yet. I take advantage of Feather Falling 10 by dropping all the way back down the tower. I enter a room and loot this chest with just a few seconds to spare, getting 16 extra obsidian and a pair of boots that make you go faster. Now it's finally time to take on the map's hardest dungeon. I set up another arrow despawn timer and turn up my render distance to keep it loaded for the time being. The first section of this area uses a combination of cobwebs, soul sand, and ice to slow the player down as much as possible. But of course, I have a way to cheese this area and make it a lot faster. I use my shovel and pickaxe to instantly break through the two layers of the floor and go under the cobwebs, greatly speeding things up. This doesn't make the area super easy though. It's not that hard to accidentally get killed by mobs if you forget to keep your hunger up. On top of that, this area does take longer than a minute meaning that I eventually have to turn down my render distance to unload the arrow, and I have lost runs in the past by forgetting to do that. As you can tell, these speedruns are quite tricky to execute and a lot of effort was put into both this run and this video, so make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future.
On a pace like this, I somehow still have the guts to go for this risky pearl shot. I take the time to line it up, and on my first try, I get interrupted by a skeleton. After dealing with that, I try it again, and this time, I manage to thread the needle and throw the pearl into the next room. You'll see that there is a wool box in front of me, but this is actually a prank the map maker tries to pull on us. The only thing in that wool box is a stick, and the actual wool is located further in the dungeon. I rush through this room by punching out some primed TNT, and I run through this tunnel of safety towards the very last room of the dungeon. You can tell that this map was made in 2015 because one of the signs says, this is Sparta on it. This room has its own name, Final Screams, but the only things really screaming here are the gas because I'm just breathing through it. After getting some extra supplies as well as some gold for the gold block, I go to the back of this pillar and break through this glass to finally obtain the red wool. From there, I can just load the arrow back in and let it despawn. This teleports me all the way back to the entrance of the end, I mean, the Forbidden Realm, and I can use the exit portal to head out. I'm back at the map spawn point, but I can turn up my render distance to reactivate the instant signal deload I set up at intersection 2 to immediately teleport to the hub. Then I dig into the ceiling to discover, you guessed it, another teleporter, which takes me to intersection 5. As per usual, I'm going to set up an arrow despawn timer here and make my way towards another dungeon called Glacial Ruins. This time, I won't need more than a minute to go through it, so I'm going to turn my render distance up to ensure the arrow is loaded the whole time. You might notice that I'm running a bit faster now, and that's because I equipped the pair of boots that add 20% to your running speed. These boots don't have feather falling on them though, so I have to throw a pearl to get to the bottom of this pit without dying of fall damage. I see a couple of endermen on my left, but because of the insane amount of pearls I got earlier, I can just ignore them and move on. There is a complicated path through this area that the map maker wants me to take, but I can skip that by using ender pearls, I mean, by wall bridging above lava while gas are firing at me and then doing a block clutch. This puts me in a good spot to access the last room of the dungeon where I can pillar up to grab the light gray wool before I teleport out. After that dungeon, I make one last stop at intersection 5 to set up one more instant signal deload. I get rid of the redstone components because I don't need them anymore. Then I use some of the obsidian from earlier to make another portal because the map maker intends for us to enter the nether from deep inside of another area that we really don't care about. In the nether, I break a block of obsidian around the portal frame to deactivate the portal. Then I run to this bridge and throw an ender pearl to barely make it onto the part of the fortress where the pink wool is. But getting the wall isn't the only thing I do here. If you know anything about Minecraft speedrunning, you'll know that one block in the nether is equal to 8 blocks in the overworld, so speedruns often take advantage of nether travel to get the areas faster, and this run is no exception. But since this isn't the best area for making nether portals, I eat my god apple and plunge into the lava below. This seems pointless at first, but just like in regular Minecraft, there's a solid floor underneath the lava that I can basically drill through thanks to my efficiency 5 diamond pickaxe. Once I'm at the bottom, I go to specific coordinates and make a nether portal to take me to the stronghold. And by that, I mean it's just another dungeon called the pirate stronghold. I spawn on top of this huge platform which keeps the area dark, then throw a pearl down to the top of the tower. I can't get the portal to take me directly to the wool box, so this is the next best thing. After getting the wool, I make another portal which takes me back to the underground tunnels in the nether. This is why I broke that portal I originally came from, because if I didn't, then I would have been sent there instead. Also, you may be wondering why I didn't use a portal to travel to that other dungeon in Intersection 5. That's because the nether in this map is surrounded by sick bedrock walls on all sides, so the nether coordinates that would take me to Glacial Ruins are actually located out of bounds. The next couple minutes of this run just follow the same model of building nether portals at specific coordinates to collect the last few wool blocks, so I'll be taking this time to explain how I got here. Over four years ago, I published the very first run of this map, it was a 100% run which collected all of the bonus emeralds as well as the main objective blocks, and it ended up taking an hour and 44 minutes. It wasn't until almost 3 years later that Japonk would do the first any percent run of the map, which took 47 minutes. This got me interested in running the map again, 
so I changed up the route and lowered the time down to 31 minutes. A few months later, Ty ended up getting the first sub-30, making him the world record holder not only for this map, but for every map in the Untold Stories series, of which there are seven. It wasn't until almost a year later that I felt up to the challenge and decided to look at this map for the third time. I was able to find many new strategies to speed up the current route by a few minutes, and this run was the end result. Another thing worth mentioning is that in this run, I used a couple of mods that use the Legacy Fabric mod loader. Aside from Optifine, I used a mod to get the timer on the top right corner of the screen, and another to get a simplified view of my coordinates in the top left. If you want to download any of these mods yourself, you can find the links to them in the description. I'd also like to give shoutouts to a few people who helped me on this endeavor. First, I'd like to thank Benner Contronaut for helping the community understand how entities unload in Minecraft version 1.8. This run would have been minutes slower if not for his recent discoveries. Next, I'd like to thank Japonk, Sporkle, and Schmidt Plays for helping to come up with some more minor route and strategy improvements. Lastly, shoutouts to Seaskull, JR5000, ERGC Xander, and ReadyBan for reviewing the rough draft of this video and giving me ideas on how to improve it. You can find all of their channels in the description as well. With that all out of the way, I'm kind of running out of things to talk about, so I'll give you some peace and quiet while I'm making these last few portals but not before reminding you to check out my Twitch channel if you're interested in watching whatever I decide to speedrun next. After all these portals, I'm about to collect the last wool of the run. This portal takes me inside the Cyan Wool Dungeon, and I do one more pearl clip through this bedrock wall, which saves around 20 seconds compared to just digging around it. Once I get this final wool, I'm going to activate the instant signal delo that I set up at the Intersection 5 teleporter to go back to the hub. Since the monument is located in this area, all I have to do is craft my minerals into mineral blocks, and then place everything on the monument to finish the run. And just like that, the run is over. The final time is 21 minutes and 32 seconds, which ends up being a whole 25% faster than the previous world record. If you think you're ready to see a 100% speedrun of the map where I get all of the bonus emeralds, there's a link to my most recent run in the description. If you want to learn more about speedrunning complete the monument maps or even want to try it yourself, feel free to stop by the Discord server which you can also find in the description. This video took a long time to make, so let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Oh, and one more thing. Although I made no major mistakes in this run, it can technically be improved to sub 21 minutes. Do you think you have what it takes? Thanks for watching, and as always, stay speedy. Peace.